What's going on guys? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today we're going to be breaking down Teo Redding, the wide receiver for the New York Guardians, looking at his potential fantasy impact in the 2020 season in the XFL. But hey, if you guys are looking for XFL content, both news and fantasy updates click that like and subscribe button we'll be posting stuff throughout the season but anyway not going to waste any more time let's get right into this all right so as i said we're looking at teo redding for the new york guardians he's basically seen his value tick up greatly with the addition of D'Angelo Yancey and Tanner Gentry to the IR list. Now we do have to keep in mind that both of those guys are on short-term IR, which means that they might come back, you know, as early as like week two through four, which would definitely put a damper on the expectations that we have for Teo Redding. But even then we don't know how effective they'll be coming back off of injury. We don't know the length of the extent of the injury. We just we don't have that information in the XFL like we would in the NFL. So we're trying to just move forward as if these are going to be the receivers going into it. And if they are dominant enough, they'll probably maintain that role. So Teo Redding basically is looking to be the opposite receiver to Mikhail McKay, who is that you know big bodied red zone target, deep down field target. Well, Teo Redding is a perfect complement for Mikhail McKay. Comes in at 6'1", 181 pounds, so definitely a lot smaller than Mikael McKay. So 25 years old, so definitely definitely still in his prime. Uh, so has a pretty decent catch radius and arm length, though, for being a little bit shorter. Uh, but, I mean, well, I guess shorter than Mikael McKay, but still a pretty big guy for a receiver. 40-yard uh, dash time, 4 you know, pretty fast, not the greatest speed score down the field, but good burst and agility. Should be able to create some separation off the line of scrimmage. Look for Teo Redding to you know get some deep downfield passes, but also some short underneath stuff as well. Like I said, I think he complements Mikael McKay pretty well. They're not going to be able to lock Mikael McKay down because Teo Redding also has the ability to get open down the field. As we've already seen in training camp and scrimmage, Teo Redding has already had a few nice deep bombs from Matt McGloin. So I think he's going to fit very nicely and should be able to replace what we are expecting to see in D'Angelo Yancey. We look at his college stats at Bowling Green. Uh, you know, didn't really do too much in his first couple years. His junior and senior year, 31 and 45 receptions, 423 yards, and then 624. So nothing great, but about 13 and a half yards per reception, as I said. Has the ability to work deep, but also in those short underneath routes. Uh, and then eight touchdowns in that last year. So definitely knows how to score. I don't think he'll be the primary red zone guy by any means with Mikael McKay there, but should have enough targets to end up being a high enough floor. And like I said, should be able to replace some of that value that we were expecting in D'Angelo Yancey, who was going to be a pretty high overall pick. So Teo Redding is at least a nice substitute for D'Angelo Yancey and I think is worth a decently high pick should be a pretty valuable wide receiver too in the XFL but anyway thank you guys so much for watching if you're looking for rankings for your XFL fantasy leagues click that link in the description below or go to fantasyaddictionnetwork.com I'll be updating those for you guys all the way up until the time the season starts and if you're looking for fantasy and XFL content every day click the like and subscribe button we'll be keeping you up to date on all the latest and greatest news around the XFL thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video